Welcome to the CES meeting. Today is April 6th, and the topic for today is symbols as weak map keys, which we, which I hear were discussed at a records and tuples meeting yesterday. Right. Um, and, uh, and we're going to call it a short meeting unless that topic stretches out. Um, and uh, we have decided that we will defer the topic uh, that Leo brought for today um, in order to give uh, what? Rick and, Rick and, uh, and team an opportunity to prepare material, if that's okay. Well, um, I, I actually brought them here, like uh, Karidi's already joined, but uh, uh, Rick just joined. So we can, we, we can see schedule. Maybe we can start some discussion about it. Rick, is this a good day to talk about benchmarks for near membranes? Uh, yeah, sure. All right, cool. Well, uh, Matthew, let's uh, let's start with your topic and then uh, proceed to Rick. Yeah, so a really quick update yesterday, there was the records and tuples uh, monthly meeting. Um, so as we all know, there is no object placeholder or box anymore, uh, anywhere near the record and tuple proposal. Uh, the approach is going back to using symbol as uh, weak map keys. Uh, there's been contention about what kind of symbol to allow in weak map keys and what kind of uh, symbols to disallow, uh, if any. Um, I think everybody has agreed that registered symbols, uh, things that you can get from uh, symbol.4, uh, providing a string, would uh, not be allowed as uh, weak map keys. Um, the next type of uh, symbol is a unique symbol. Everybody agrees that those should obviously be usable. Uh, the last kind of symbol is well-known symbols, which are spec as unique symbols. Uh, however, they are um, somewhat permanent. They, they, they will never really be collected because they're uh, intrinsics that need to always be there. Some of them are undeniable in the current realm, um, maybe all of them. Uh, some of them uh, can always be reached again if you create a new realm. Uh, and uh, so at the end of the day, it doesn't make much sense to use those as uh, weak map keys. However, uh, there were arguments made uh, that it's very hard to uh, test if a symbol is a, um, uh, a well-known or not. Uh, the fact that it shows up on the symbol global might not be uh, entirely the right predicate because there may be host install symbols, uh, symbols installed by shim and so on, which technically would be usable uh, in weak map keys, but should they, should they not? Um, the, um, so, and, and, at the end of the day, the situation with those well-known symbols is uh, very similar to object uh, to some other undeniable objects that can be currently used in weak map uh, as keys, such as the object prototype and so on, which will always be around and uh, will never so, end as well. So hold on, uh, object prototype will not always be around. There's a separate object prototype per realm. Uh, the thing that is important about the, the undeniable uh, aspect of well-known symbols that's important is the fact that you recreate them when you create a new realm. In, in your current realm where the weak map is gonna live, object prototype will always be around. So the lifetime of object prototype will always be as uh, longer than, uh, than your weak map instance. Uh, uh, only if the weak map instance itself holds on to object prototype. Um, or if there's, if eval is dropped, uh, if the only thing that remains from the realm is the weak map instance, and if it no longer inherits from object prototype, then there's nothing holding on to object prototype. That sounds like, I mean, it, it sounds like a bit of an edge case. I would I would put it under the same kind of edge case. Like if someone deletes the symbol out of the global and deletes uh, Shadow Realm or any way to create a new realm, they would not be able to get at some of the intrinsic symbols anymore either. Um, um, so to to give a, a better perspective, um, I think uh, yesterday at the meeting I started this, uh, 
I bring I brought back the discussion on like retrievability of objects. I know when we talk about like uh, cross realms things, uh, we can recreate the, the well known symbols. Um, but if we talk about the same realm, uh, I was using object prototype or function prototype, like things are retrievable by syntax um, rather than just like direct API access. Uh, they're all like relatively speaking, the same way you can control um, access to retrieving object of prototype or function of prototype or function constructor. Um, the same way you can retrieve them and you can uh, deny access to, to them in code, like from user customization, you, uh, the expectation, especially talking about when we go back to realms, if you have the first control to create a new realm uh, and uh, like control for the first initial code, you can control access to the well-known symbols. Um, so you get the, the well-known symbols directly. It's different from the registered uh, symbols where you can uh, retrieve them like after uh, creation. Of course, like all like, are relatively speaking. Also, I think one of the other reasons was that you have a predicate today for registered symbols. Uh, you have no predicate today in the language um, for well-known symbols. Like, so when you distinguish, when you create any distinction uh, in symbols, you have symbols that are registered, uh, symbols that are not. So that was one of the things like putting well-known symbols apart. And that was one of the conflicting points where uh, if you want to distinguish the unique uh, unique symbols, you need a predicate that out, uh, the, a different predicate that moves in like with registered symbols and well-known symbols distincting from the regular symbols. Okay, so so first I want to make my 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 overall position clear, which is I'm not blocking on any of this. Uh, whether registered symbols even are or are not weak map keys is not a blocking issue for me. Um, the where the consensus seems to have landed that registered symbols are not weak map keys, um, but well known symbols and anonymous symbols are. I'm okay with that in the sense of not blocking. Um, but this, um, but the, but I, I will say I think the structure of the argument is kind of backwards because if we wanted it to be easy to check um, uh, that something was or was not acceptable as a weak map key. And to say that re that well-known symbols are not acceptable as weak map keys, we could obviously make it easy to do that check. Unfortunately, no. Um, so that's what we wanted originally, a predicate that uh, says like, is something usable as a weak map key? However, uh, the position seems to be that a predicate that just returns a value, if there is, um, should not change its uh, uh, its answers over changes in the spec. So if today uh, we don't allow, um, if tomorrow we don't allow records and tuples as weak map keys and records and tuples introduced and uh, that predicate first says like, no, in the future, that predicate will always have to say no, even uh, when, um, uh, uh, records and tuples, some of them may become uh, usable as weak map keys. Um, so the, the position of uh, delegates on, on that, which I'm all surprised, but I, I do understand the argument, is that if something throws, it's fine. Uh, if you build a predicate that says true or false based on that same, uh, would it throw or not, it's not okay to have that as an API. I, I, I agree about the software evolution point, but that just means that if we decide that uh, well-known symbols are not weak map keys, then we've decided that permanently. And that's fine with me. And I think some delegates would block on the non, uh, on having a predicate that cannot. Uh, well, that, that, that's fine. Then the predicates who block, or, or the, then the delegates who block win because I'm not blocking on the other side, but that doesn't mean they're correct. It just means they win. Yeah, uh, Mark, there was also like a shared sentiment as, um, well-known symbols are pretty bad uh, as if, they're, if they become used as uh, uh, weak map keys, 
but that the has some precedent in the language when what it was talking about like the, the object uh prototype and the function constructor um they're also like retrievable in the sense like they have a compromise to liveness if they are used as weak map keys like it, it makes no sense like why someone wants to use that but ECMAScript does for no um control for if a user still wants to use uh, to to do that like it's the same thing like we don't advise anyone to to use uh, a well-known symbol as a weak map key but we are we are doing no specific control liveness uh is it like the life ecosystem for for that value is compromised uh, as okay but yeah let, let's be okay. also that in in no in no cases, uh, there would be an editor node added uh, clarifying that well-known symbols are uh, in, in practice not collectible. And so for the definition of liveness, you wouldn't be able to observe uh, their liveness um, uh, and, or anything related to them. Right, I mean, they're, they're not collectible so that they, uh, any implementation of a weak map uh, uh, would probably need to make a special case for them. So it's actually really, most of it, it seems that implementations today uh, they just uh, create an instance of unique symbol and uh, and and that is just never collected. So it's not collected when the realm is collected. No, because it's cross realm. It was sorry. Where where is it? It's not collected in a per realm data structure. It's collected globally to the engine. Correct, and um, so okay. it's something okay, that, that would work. we need to figure out, but it, it seems like it wouldn't be the same complexity as, um, as uh, registered symbols for which there may be many, uh, and which is basically just a, um, yeah. It, yeah, I got it. Okay, so let me just, uh, I, I'll just say one more thing on this. And then since, since, um, uh, the outcome is already determined. I won't, I, I'll stop after this one more comment, which is the real screw up that the committee made, which you know, I was on the committee when we made the screw up, uh, is that well-known symbols should have been registered. It should have. <laughs> Too late for that. Yep. Um, I wanted to also uh, give a quick heads up that uh, there is implementation concern uh, around using records and tuples uh, as weak map keys. Um, the complexity, of course, comes from the fact that uh, records and tuples don't have uh, a live, really a liveness definition of their own, but that their liveness is a compound uh, concept of all the uh, other weak map keys they contain. So basically uh, all the deeply nested symbols that they may contain, unique symbols that they may contain. Um, so it's surprising to hear that implementations have that concern and they may be pushing back on that, uh, especially because uh, Ashley actually created a, um, a shim in, in pure, entirely in JavaScript that allows uh, to do this. Um, I need to look at, at it again, uh, but to see if it doesn't have other kind of memory leaks issues. Um, but it's, yeah, it's, uh, it would be, I, I don't know if it's a deal breaker for us, but it would be unfortunate not to basically end up getting compound keys or something equivalent out of that. And that's it. Great. That being a wrap, uh, Rick or Leo, would you like to um, start off on near membrane? Yeah, so um, this is just a quick update. I don't have anything like super solid uh, at this moment. We have Shadow Realms, uh, uh, Shadow Realms implementation that got released on uh, Safari Technology Prevail version 142, if I'm not wrong. And uh, it, it is 
bringing in some good results, but I need to have more solid uh, benchmarks and to understand everything. Uh, one thing that is becoming very noticeable is the memory uh, footprint comparing a shadow realm with with iframes. Uh, performance is still like has some. I still have some questions on it because um, a lot of things changes if I have the console, uh, the browser console like open or not. Um, so what I'm doing here and I'm using a not super new version of the code. Let me get this coding here to work. How do I share my screen? Um, Safari technology Brazil, yeah. So while I'm sharing this uh, quick screen here, I'm running uh, some tests where I have the shadow uh, shadow realm. Like I'm running and I'm loading the near membrane code and uh, get making like 20 to 50 namespaces, uh, similarly to what we do at, uh, like for what we expect to, to use in, uh, within Salesforce and checking like the difference uh, for loading them. Like in some of the quick runs are showing like shadow realms being like from, it's usually around eight times uh, faster, um, two, from two to eight times faster right now, but that's more due to like memory, memory usage. It's not a like, fa uh, like speed on the execution. I'm not sure if this is super visible here. There is an average, these are early tests, so the results are not uh, super beautiful. So I have high frame average and shadow of realm average time in milliseconds um, to load this code. Uh, let me get an example here of what I'm running. Um, I, and this is not the earliest version of what Rick and uh, Caridi are, uh, have been working for the new membrane integration with the Shadow Realms, but we are now uh, being able to, to get uh, some in, uh, real time results. Let me close the console here to show the code. Um, I don't know how to remove this preview screen. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I am using this near main brain uh, to get like some quick things here as like I'm uh, creating an instance and I have some DOM manipulation inside this near main brain just to make sure like, kind of like I want to reflect a little bit of uh, final usage, but this is just like touching uh, the surface um, of what we can use. I do some evaluation here. This is using the near main brain where I have all the, uh, the mappings and everything. Uh, and I still assert like the, these things will make uh, eff effect. And I have the same thing just running the near main brain with iframe or shadow realm. Uh, in my code. Uh, I think there is much more. One of the, out of curiosi curiosity, I was trying to load this and I, like I saw that if I wanted to load like a, a thousand namespaces, which is an exaggeration, uh, I couldn't load a thousand namespaces with iframes, but I could easily load a thousand namespaces using Shadow Realms. Uh, that speaks a lot to the. Yeah, I'm sure the performance. I'm sure the browser is that put a cap on the number of iframes that are allowed to be made and attached to the DOM. Though I don't know exactly what that is, or if I'm just imagining it, but it wouldn't surprise me. I guess the saving is because uh, browser doesn't need to create all the DOM uh, structure for uh, for every uh, realm. As soon as you attach it, yeah, exactly. As soon as you attach it, it has to have a 
full body, full, full document so, document element. Yeah, that's for the creation. Uh, do you have any idea of the performance once uh, the realm is created on uh, interaction through? the Shadow Realm API and through the, um, the, mem the near membrane? Um, through the near membrane, I can tell you like uh, so far uh, from my benchmarks, I'm not seeing any like additional cost for Shadow Realms. So Shadow Realms is not introducing like any uh, anything slow. But like with the console, I get like uh, speeds up like very much faster. But I need to understand because this is the, the memory footprint that is uh, talking about when I have the console open. Um, but like for execution time, I'm not seeing like a, a super firm result right now to share. It's like, I, I can tell Shadow Realms so far with the near main brains and Keep in mind, the near membranes, as I understand, they are not highly optimized for Shadow Realms yet. They are optimized today for the iframes work. They're like using, yeah, Rick, I know, I see your face. I just seen like, I, I expect, like the more we have Shadow Realms, the more we can focus work on uh, optimizing users on Shadow Realms or? Near membrane is, base is designed uh, with, with the Shadow Realm constraints in mind. Uh, since last summer, fall. I'm sorry, I missed the crucial logic then. Uh, near membranes are what? Oh, I said near membrane base, sorry. Near, the thing you're, we're talking about is made up of two different things. There's base, which is like <clears throat> the virtual environment creation stuff, which is generic. And then there's, this is not relevant, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, I shouldn't have said that. Let me just say, um, what was I saying? Near membrane is currently um, designed with the shadow realm constraints, with that being um, uh, primitives and callable passing only. It has been since last summer into fall time when Carity uh, and I, uh, well, I'll say Carity led it and I just made sure that it was on the rails um, with testing and stuff. But yeah, it is, it's, it is definitely can always be further optimized. And John David Dalton has been like really like pressing the edges, trying to figure out ways to uh, reduce the number of proxy trap. Um, it's like, think of it as like pile up. <laughs> You know, like just the meta object programming has like trap pile up, um, which is, you know, just it's acceptable because that's just how meta object programming is in JavaScript. It's not something that needs to be changed, but it is indeed something that we are able to figure out ways to optimize around. Um, I would say when you're when you run through the shadow realm path you are indeed experiencing um, an, an even playing field with the iframe. I mean, it's actually an improved playing field, frankly, because I don't, so to actually, Matthew, to answer your question, I don't actually anticipate there being any real difference in terms of improvement with Shadow Realm Evaluate versus, you know, Eval and iframe. I don't actually, I never really anticipated that like that's not even something that I had considered. What I did consider was um, the initialization cost uh, being drastically improved, and that you know that that was like my um, you know I theorized that this will see drastic improvement in initialization costs of creating our near membrane and basically building the near membrane world inside of the shadow realm, um, and that is certainly improved. Um, I'm. Frankly, it's because we're not creating an iframe, right? We're not doing, we're not, we're not relying on DOM stuff anymore to build a, our virtual environment. We're going straight to, uh, we have a direct line to create your shadow realm, build your environment inside it, um, which is nice. Uh, 
but I hadn't given much thought to what should we expect um, in terms of performance of actual operation execution um, between the two. Yeah. And so far, I don't think we're seeing anything. That's, we're not seeing any any uh, uh, negative impact. That's for sure. For sure. Um, yes. I would have to think a little bit more deeply about how we could um, how we could measure that in a useful way. I wasn't certain how your near membrane was structured, uh, but I figured like you might have one case where the near membrane runs on top of the coalable boundary. And then in the iframe case, you basically have near membrane running on bare metal uh, where you don't have the uh, wrappers in between, but you still have the, um, you call directly a function from another realm uh, it, uh, instead. Um, th that's what I was imagining. And, and I was wondering if the coalable boundary uh, mechanism was introducing uh, a performance impact. Gotcha. So in order for us to do that, we would have to grab a historic release that predates our, so we did an interesting thing. We, we had like another, um, another goal internally for our, the project here at Salesforce that uses the near membrane library, which I won't go into because it's, because I can't. Um, and to, unlock that capability we had a few obstacles in near membrane and clarity actually had the sort of the foresight and realized like if we just do the work we need to do for shadow realms now now being like last summer um then that will help us unlock this other capability so we've actually had a callable boundaries implementation um that we've been imposing on our iframe based Near memory. Yeah, that's, that's, that's what I meant. Like, if you use the right. so, global binary based approach, but instead right. of calling wrappers and calling directly functions from the other realm. So, let me. So, I was about to get there. So, when I did, uh, when we did that last summer, fall time, I did do a few measurements that were basically like initialization and run some code, and then what happens? Um, and, and, like, what is the, the outcome? And there were um, there were notable regressions, but the for our case, um, security trumps performance at Salesforce. So we were able to basically say like, this is a cost that we knew would happen. So we're going to float it through. But the answer to your question is is that yes, um, that certainly uh, does have have an unfortunate additional cost. The callable boundary is, uh, uh, how would I describe it nicely? It, and also because we are proxies all the way down on like, so we're, we have this notion of your, your global virtualization target. And when the top level window is your virtualization target, you have to proxy everything, right? We only recently solved the, how to do this lazily and then, and it has, that really only affects initialization time. So, but when you're in band, like everything that you want to access across the boundary, which is just on like everything uh, that is, you know, DOM related, right? Um, the cost has grown notably. Um. By the way, I think the other day, I don't remember where I had, uh, where we had the discussion, but uh, we were wondering if uh, freezing uh, the proxy uh, handler uh, would have any performance impact, uh, beneficial performance impact on-, uh, on, on I have that conversation every week. <laughs> and, and if they, uh, and, and why couldn't engines optimize like to at least avoid like, you know, basically save the uh, the traps when they're uh, when right. you create the proxy and uh, and and don't uh, query the handler for them every time. Well, I think uh, right. I think they they the conversations that we have with Igalia, at least from what I remember, um, that's doable, but it will not help that much. It wouldn't. Right. Uh, they, they, in fact, when they did the profiling of the near membrane implementation that we have and so on, there were bigger fish to fry 
uh, especially the get on property descriptors, for example. That one was a big one. Um, so there are all the things that they believe will give us a, um, a little bit of an edge. In any case, when you read our code everywhere that we create a handler or something like that, we freeze it and we put it out like uh, optimistic optimizations here. <laughs> like, uh, but I have an interesting conversation as well the last couple of days with Axel since he published the the blog post and we have been going back and forth on, on some of the um, things that we will be able to do to accommodate people with the very little membrane kind of thing. And that conversation also try, uh, uh, drift a little bit into the performance aspect of these things. And um, if the handlers are static, will that help? If the handler is a proxy itself, for the traps to be figured out dynamically. Is that going to be a problem? Things like that, we don't know yet, but we can start make, making some measurements soon. We can tell you that it's possible to have uh, the handler, at least the prototype of the handler be a proxy because we've done that in uh, in the SES shim. Uh, hopefully we can get rid of that, but um, yeah. yeah. But I think uh, so far so good. Things are looking good from, from all point of views, I would say. Um, we were able to switch that very quickly. Everything works, seems to work. Um, we just need to do a lot more tests and the optimizations are going to be our primary case for the next few months, I would say, like continue optimizing that. I think uh, JDD and Rick uh, have been wonderful trying to figure out what, what the heck is slowing down the thing. There is a lot of back and forward between the two sides of the membrane. That's that's the biggest problem. Like you, you, you have to go back and forward um, thousands of times um, on any operation. And that's like, eh. so we'll see. Um, in addition to that, and this is, I'm, I'm going to preface this with this, probably not a conversation for this group, but it's something I want to discuss here because um, uh, if you're if any of you are in a position to to uh, see how this impacts your your work if you're you know migrating into using shadow realms one strange thing that we've encountered which is like the last bug that we have that is identified by our our unit tests which is that and I, so basically what I think that this is caused by is um, when we try to create this uh, lowercase word window object in our shadow realm that is like a virtualizing, like it's a virtualized <laughs> chunk to real window. Um, and it's, I, I think that there's something going on and there was a, Leo linked me to a maybe what wig or some damn thing. I have no idea. Conversation about event error or yeah. event target or something. Um, I don't know if that is directly related, but the global object not being not having event target in its prototype chain inside the shadow realm when you're trying to map that global to via global this to process. Hold on a second. Oh Jesus. Oh, are you trying uh, yeah, through, like I don't have you don't you don't have ad event listener on your blog. Right. Like you would. So your the global this in the shadow realm is just a plain object, right? Uh, so you would so have. You're trying to do this in a brown, right? Right. I think you're about to walk right into it. Go. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. Work, work it yeah. out. And if you try to recreate an environment that looks like the uh, the incubator realm, uh, you need to have the global disk be the window object, which, <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah, okay. So it's, I don't think it's a problem for this group, but yeah. I would like to get this group thinking about it so that we can like pig pile on whoever's problem it is to like get it solved when the time comes. Uh, Cause that is actually our only, here, here's a weird funky, funky thing. And so basically how I, how I was like 
it's like when, when you get to this thing it's like why is like why are why is our like uh dunder proto chain not working correctly here either so i tried a funky thing where i destructure <laughs> add event listener and remove event listener from my incubator realm window. And I pass that in as an endowment, right? Ta-da, my test pass. <laughs> I'm wondering if, God, uh, you might not be, I mean, you're never gonna be able to have it uh, entirely right, but you might be able to get away with uh, setting a Proxy as oh, no, that's not going to work. Damn, how are you going to solve that? What, what, one thing that we've tried some a lot of different things so far. I was going to say set a proxy as the prototype of the global this uh, and trap when you create when you have assignments or something like that and create in the window, but it's not you wouldn't have the window object being the right one. Right. Carity, we're already doing that with link global this, right? That's exactly what that does. I think if I remember. The, so the, 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 for the prototype of the global object is pointing to a proxy of the yep. prototype of the incubator realm. Yes, because that's possible in the shadow realm, but not possible in iframe. So in an iframe, we have to do a lot more work because we cannot replace this unforgeable. So we have to go and wipe out whatever that object has and then uh, put a bunch of linkage to the outer one. But so one thing that I do want to spend time on, and, and I, I promised a couple of times, but we never really materialized it, it's like really come, come into this meeting and explaining what we have, um, more of the perspective of how the people might be able to use that, specifically Agoric. I think uh, there's a lot of stuff in there that might be interesting if, if you spend the time trying to reason about it. Um, and, uh, and so I wanted to do that from that perspective, not from the perspective of what we do, because it might be quite different. But I think there's a lot of uh, nuances there that we figure out that, that might be useful for other people. Um, the sort of the closing thought I had though on the other bit was that the argument I think we may need to have is with the folks spe specking out what gets exposed and how in, in the shadow realm. Um, it might come down to like asking for that global object to have an event targeted at the prototype. So we might want to think about that, think about <clears throat> the implications uh, there. Um, I don't think there's a rush at the moment. Uh, we don't have a rush on our end yet. I mean, if event target is put in, can you, I mean, what's, what's the case? Just being able to call, why does it need to be an event target? I, I, I'm not sure I follow. Like, I think having event target available in, uh, in the shadow realm, oh, it is a global object there that can be used as a target of global events that would have been on the window uh, seems acceptable, but I, I, I don't know. I, I... So the, the event target, I think, is just remember that window that the score underscore proto dot the score underscore proto dot the score underscore proto points to event target proto. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's the thing. It's the last one in the in the in the line. A proto chain for window. Yeah. Um, so it, you have to reconstruct that somehow. Uh, in, in our case, we just make a replacement of the underscore underscore proto for the global base in the shadow realm to point to a proxy of the incubator one. Mm -hmm. And that covers the case when you go underscore underscore proto underscore underscore proto three times and then you get to the uh, even even target that has the add event listener yada yada. Yeah, so I understand that. But why? So what is your need for having a real event target in uh, in the shadow realm? You oh well, no. So remember, the thing that that we're doing is virtualizing the incubator realm. So yeah. we do a full virtualization 
not a full virtualization, but a virtualization of the main window. So mm -hmm. when you run code inside their shadow realm, it looks like it's running on the main one. It's yeah. just running inside the shadow realm. Um, and the reason why we virtualize it there is because we want to prevent side effects or some side effects on the main window on the incubator realm. Like if you're trying to modify prototypes or trying to modify objects that are DOM API, stuff like that, it will not leak into the main window. Um, um, so that's the, the, the first step. The second step is that to be able to control any evaluation um, carry on by the sandbox code, the code that we run inside this virtualized environment. So if they do any kind of evaluation, eval, import, or whatever they do, that thing will, will continue to run inside the virtualized environment. It will never leave the virtual environment. Um, so that's the, that's, the, that's, that's the use case there. There are things that we want to prevent that we don't not, we don't want them to uh, to to do, and those we go through distortions. Um, there are other cases that are more complicated distortions. Like a good example of it is like you insert an iframe in the page in the main page, and normally you will be able to access that iframe by doing a window dot frame the frame zero frame one frame two whatever the frame is, or simply just doing window square bracket zero yeah. one two whatever. So those, th those things you don't, see, you don't see then inside, or you might want to see them, we don't know yet, but there's some debate there, but those are complicated distortion. When it comes to distortions of a simple function, it's easy because you, you just want to swap out the, the function with a different functionality and that, that works well. But the main goal is that like the code runs in there, it's controlled, anything that is the, the, the the code is attempting to use or call or whatever it's trying to do, we, we might have control over that by having some distortions. Um, and it looks like it is a main window. So it, they have access to window, they have access to document, they have access to everything. Uh, okay. It's just in a control manner. In, in, in the... Um... Which, right, so, sorry, I'm um, just yes. to, to highlight one thing. It's like this virtualization engine, we also use it for Node, uh, we also want to use it for ES or for any JavaScript environment. So the core of it is the same. You have an environment that has a global object. We want to virtualize that uh, to have a high fidelity virtualization of that thing in a way that code that runs inside the sandbox is in some ways controlled. Go ahead. Yeah, and I, I was just still trying to link the dots uh, with having event target, the real event target available in uh, the shadow realm itself. And if it's, for example, to um, have, uh, the use case I can think of is to have errors, unhandled errors in uh, from that shadow realm being uh, reified. What you can do is if you have a global object, like a global this.errors, that is an event target, uh, your shim can grab that listen to those and have a distortion that uh, when uh, the code goes through the window or whatever, like the prototype and target uh, to add an event listener on the on the real on, on your version of a global disk uh, and checks for some events like it would either get the events from um, uh, the incubator realm or for an handled uh, errors or things like well, that grab them from uh, from the local source. Well, so the issue there, and I think the issue of the discussion was more around the window will not will not be an event target instance. Um, not the window, sorry, the global disk in the chat realm will not be a target, a event target instance. So it's not an instance of event target, but we might still want to share the event target inside the realm in case that people running code inside the sandbox or the, or the shadow realm, not the sandbox, shadow realm, they might want to do their own um, uh, eventing and having a consolidated event target mechanism or um, a meter mechanism, whatever the name is, similar to what they do in Node where the global days in Node is not an event target either, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong. But still, you have event target. You can create things and you can do things with that event target. 
um, in, a, in the same way that you can do it in in the in the DOM. Sorry, in the in a page in a window without having to do anything with the DOM itself. So it's not DOM bound at that point. Um, so for us, none of that matters really because we're going to replace everything anyways because we want a virtualization. So you, you, when you listen for events, you're listening for events on the incubator, not on yourself. For us, it doesn't matter really. For us, it's just, can I replace it with a new one? Yes. So if I can replace it, then I will replace it. Um, uh, unless there is a strong opinion on not replacing certain things, uh, we do that for certain things that we just keep it from the original shadow realm intents, but most of the things we just replace it entirely. Um, but I, I think the, the event target thing from that issue that was open a few weeks ago, I think I agree that should be um, there. There's no reason for, in my opinion, to not have it there even though the global update is not an event target index. Um, the errors though, were a little bit more tricky because the error, as, I, as far as I know right now, those errors events are only triggered by the, the engine itself uh, on the global object. And that will not happen in a shadow realm. So what is the point of having error there? Um, I don't know. It, it I think it should happen, but it, it, the fact that it happens on the global is just how it's currently spec for uh, a window realm. Yeah, and I do agree with what you propose of having something in the global object that, that, that can mimic that thing and can be standardized and so on. So I, I, I'm, 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 I'm supportive of that. I think it's going to be more clear that if you dealing with a, a place where errors will occur and you can listen for them in any platform and they make sense for what you want to do and so on. So yeah, I'm, I'm okay with that. But for us, that doesn't, doesn't really change anything because we only focus on the incubator realm. The other one is just to have the controls. It's not to have features on it. Sounds like we've run the topic to ground. Yeah, hopefully next week, uh, maybe we will be able to, uh, it will be interesting to, uh, I'll ask Axel if we can share his code. Um, it's a hundred lines of code, membrane implementation for Shadow Realm. Very, very interesting code. Yeah, you know, also invite him to join us if he can. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll try to invite him. I think that uh, there's some refinements there that he did on top of, I didn't think about those before, but the concept of the pointer that we have, that, that Daniel came out with, uh, that, that, I don't know if it was Daniel or myself, but um, the, the concept of the pointer to set up, the to preserve the, 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 the identity across realms and so on. Um, he refined that a little bit. Not sure if it was intentional or not, but it turns out that might work better than what we have. And so I want to go over it. It's only 100 lines of code with comments. So it's very, very tiny, very tiny. Looking forward. I mean, your original uh, iRealm thing was pretty interesting. So <laughs> yeah, this one is more interesting than that one. Yeah, I'll see. We'll see. But if we can get out there a library that is a hundred lines of code, very tiny, very solid, that you can use with any realm, that will that will that will help a lot of people. Yeah, I think that since this is the biggest complaint about Shadow Realm right now, that um, you need complex membranes go on top, and people don't know how to do that, obviously. <laughs> so having a, a very simple thing that people can be like, oh yeah, right, that would be great. 
All right. I'm going to shut down the recording. Sounds like a meeting. Thank you, everyone.